Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, is a method by which we can help patients with various brain conditions. It allows us to implant electrodes very precisely within a patient's brain and to use electricity to modulate uh, abnormal information flow within the brain. And we can use this to help patients with Parkinson's disease, and that is the most common indication for deep brain stimulation. But we can also help patients with tremor or with dystonia. Uh, these are very well established in evidence-based medicine. Uh, and there's an emerging field uh, that gives us the potential of helping deep brain stimulation in patients with mental disorders as well. So Brain Lab uh, provides a software suite uh, that allows us to access the very best that imaging technology can allow, uh, both in terms of structural imaging, where we can see the structure of the brain, as well as using more advanced imaging techniques to look at the connectivity between different brain regions. This allows us to plan our surgery with an unprecedented uh, precision and detail. But more above that, it allows us to visualize where our leads are actually placed within the brain and also allows us to maximize um, new DBS technologies such as directional uh, lead placement where we can visualize models of how the electricity flows through the brain um, with the various DBS leads that we're using and this helps our neurologists program our patients uh, more rapidly and more effectively. Traditionally, deep brain stimulation was performed with patients awake, and this arose out of the necessity to do so because we had no way of visualizing with great accuracy the structure uh, of the patient's brain that we were operating on. Um, moreover, we had no way of confirming that we'd reached the right anatomical target. Now that we have uh, more and more advanced imaging techniques, both structural MRI that shows us the targets we're trying to reach, this allows us to target patients, but also to verify that we have reached the desired anatomical spot. This allows us to perform surgery asleep, and clearly this is much less traumatic for patients. Of course, a sleep surgery can be done, and we can reassure our patients and uh, keep them comfortable, as comfortable as we can, but taking a patient with severe Parkinson's disease off their medication and then submitting them to an awake procedure is a traumatic event and it can prevent some patients from benefiting uh, from this uh, technology. And I think an asleep option is really a, a great step forward. Unfortunately, we can never give patients a 100% uh, guarantee uh, that all their symptoms are going to go away. But our job is to try and maximize the benefit in every single patient. And we can only do that with close collaboration between neurosurgeons and neurologists, uh, between uh, neurosurgeons and neurologists and their nursing staff, um, and a process of audit where we look at where our leads are within an individual patient's brain and look at the long-term results that we achieve clinically for these patients. Uh, and the more data we gather um, together within our own practices, but also sharing our experiences uh, through meetings and through research, the more we can refine our surgical targeting, not only to improve the clinical outcome, but to try and avoid uh, potential risks such as bleeding or adverse effects of stimulation. When we look at what diseases deep brain stimulation can treat, the vast majority of patients receiving this therapy for the past 25, 27 years has been in movement disorders. And I very much suspect that that's what is going to happen in the decades to come. However, improvements in technology will allow us to reach patients with Parkinson's disease who don't benefit from uh, that uh, therapy, either because surgery takes a long time and it's very difficult to meet the demand that we have uh, from the large patient population that's out there. And this is growing over time because of course the population is growing more elderly and we often treat degenerative diseases. Um, but additionally, we are finding uh, new indications such as mental disorders. And there is growing evidence that we can help patients with severe refractory Tourette syndrome and OCD. Um, we are still experimenting whether we can find suitable targets within the brain to help patients with depression. So I think there's a lot of potential uh, out there, 
but I think we need to engage our psychiatry colleagues uh, for them to be as enthusiastic as their neurology colleagues when it comes to surgical therapies in order to receive the referrals and to conduct the trials that are going to guide us in helping more patient groups.